uh, when we read the script, I think it was sort of an unexpected tonal thrill ride roller coaster that was a metaphor about love mm -hmm. yeah. and how complicated it is mm -hmm. through the prism of a genre that we don't usually see it presented through. Well, Josh, if only you'd said it in the other interviews, that was really- Thank you, I very, appreciate it. Really the coffee finally kicked in. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still waiting for mine, guys. I Well, what, what I appreciated about this without talking about the, you know what, uh, there was a very, uh, a very charismatic relationship you guys have built and this is a really marvelous love story which is again something we don't see a lot of adult love stories that are, are kind of based in fantasy based in drama how did you guys connect initially and did you talk about the characters and how you guys meet and how you guys work together it's just lovely on screen what was it like finding that um, well, I sort of had like an inside knowledge that Josh was really great to work with. Um, the mm. business is pretty small and it's a bit like high school. Everybody talks. And so <laughs> I'd heard from countless sources that Josh was um, consistently lovely and brilliant at what he does. So she was surprised so when, when he that was a monster, didn't happen. I was very frightened. The opposite um, happened. Yeah, I'm but sorry. my lawyer, yeah. no, we had a great time together. I think we had a strong rehearsal week or two where we really broke down the beats of every scene we kind of felt around in like particularly the last couple of episodes as to where when there's a couple of twists and turns where the characters would um be at certain places and our director was incredibly collaborative he's also the writer Abe Forsyth and he was very open to our opinions on Mary and Gary uh where they would be at um at the various stages and I think that really helped our process a hundred percent I I think not only the rehearsals but but sort of this very strange shooting during a, a pandemic, the intimacy of depending on each other and only having each other to work off of and play off of and having a very small cast made the process so collaborative and so essential in its collaboration because you, you really have to take some big swings in this series that are all over the map from a tonal perspective mm -hmm. and you have to trust each other and the director in order to execute it uh without it becoming messy or mm -hmm. strange or uh, or missing the mark and it to have a scene partner like isla who's so every time the camera's on she just whatever the script calls for she goes 150 percent, and you know you're not going to fail you know you're not going to fall you know you're going to have something to play off of that's going to bring out the best in you and so in that sense it was it was easy it was fun it was um the the kind of experience you hope everything would be yeah yeah well funny enough when i was watching it i i, I was watching you and i'm like my god you work you make everyone look great and not of course josh you're a fantastic not sure what that means but thank you <laughs> to isla thank for, you for, me for making, making me look great, look great. Yeah. <laughs> no, but there's, there's this there's a connection that you guys have and i think what what is really interesting is this is a sad show there's a lot of yeah. heartbreak here yeah and that what how how do you balance that with the humor well, luckily, that's not our responsibility, but we did try during those scenes to steer clear from melodrama and to really find connective and light beats within the darkness. But that's what I was so attracted to in this project is the fact that it's not just falling in love from the fun perspective that we've seen a thousand times in everything. It's actually how does it feel really that vulnerability, that emotional, like you're completely, you're revealed, your authentic self is revealed and seen by another person. And it is absolutely terrifying. It is like a horror movie, jokingly, but it is. And that's what is so, um, you know, which, which we touch upon in this series is so important, I think, and what people will project their own baggage, emotional baggage onto our characters and onto this experience. And hopefully they'll come away feeling as fulfilled as our characters are. Well, we got to wrap. I mean, honestly, you guys are both so perfect in this and you both made me cry. Thanks a lot. Oh, uh, <laughs> appreciate that. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Emma. You gotta help me so that I can help you. Dad, why do I have to talk to you? You don't talk to me. It is my job to help keep you safe. Maybe you should help yourself. It's like she's built this fortress around herself so that nothing can hurt her. Them. 
Em, you're okay. Uh, are you okay? She got a panic attack. Look at me. Look at me. I know oh, where you're at. What did you say to her? Oh, God. Hi. I wanted to say sorry for wrecking your universe. You coming in to check on Emma was a very thoughtful gesture. I did hit you both with my car. You did. And I am planning on suing. <laughs> It's kind of very easy to be in your company, you know that? Yeah, it's been a while for me, too. Well, why did you run away from me? I'm a complicated person. I've got baggage. After the accident, when I was scared, you said that you'd been there, too. Oh, I have. A bunch of times. My life is a mess. Messy is good. Messy what's good. I've never shared this with anyone before. Hostages of geography. Felt like the universe was bringing us together. What if this happened for a reason? How did your husband die? <laughs> We've all got wolves in us. You just have to make sure you feed the right one. <laughs> this is me. This is who I am.